Good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to speak today. My name is Jennifer Davis, and my discussion will focus on a recently developed method for the separation of four THC isomers using liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. First, a little bit of background about the Hemp Farming Act of 2018. In 2014, the Farm Bill distinguished hemp from marijuana, but the interpretation of this law was vague and difficult. It was not until the Hemp Farming Act was signed into law in December 2018 that the legalization of the cultivation and distribution of hemp was federally legalized. Now, how did this affect the Controlled Substance Act and the implications on cannabis and law enforcement? Well, marijuana is still considered a Scheduled One drug. However, it removes the plant cannabis sativa from the CSA as long as the plant contains no more than 0.3% THC by dry weight. This is very important as this was the first time a value was placed upon the psychoactive compound, which forced forensics and seized drug laboratories to adapt methodology. When the Farm Bill in 2018 was initially released, there were headlines all over the U.S. looking to determine how to interpret this law. How do you tell the two apart since they're from the same plant, and how do you know when to prosecute? Even more recently, with the decline in CBD sales, many hemp growers and sellers began to move to other variants of THC. Delta-8, for example, is derived from CBD and increased in popularity because it is not specified as a part of the Farm Bill and therefore is not considered illegal. So now, not only was an adaptive methodology needed for quantitation, but ideally there should be separation of the different THC variants. Traditionally, qualitative analysis is done using either a GCFID or GCMS instrument. However, there are limitations to using a GC. Because of the heated injection port, all acid forms of THC are converted to delta-9 THC due to heat. This conversion is not always 100%, so one would need to report the total THC content as opposed to each individual THC isomer. You could also perform derivatization of the THCA, but this can be a tedious process. Due to these limitations, other analytical techniques should be explored. An alternate analytical technique that could offer accurate quantitation of each cannabinoid and THC present, including the acid form, could be liquid chromatography or liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. LC allows for full separation of all native and acid forms of the THC isomers, as well as providing spectral information if a mass spec is used for additional detection. For the remainder of the talk, I will be discussing the use of an LCMS method for quantitation and separation of four delta THC isomers. These methods will include an inline PDA for additional detection, as well as comparing both a single quadrupole and triple quadrupole. Since the farm bill is left to interpretation for what value of THC is required, many states have implemented their own interpretation of the bill. Delta-9 is known to have the psychedelic effects, but there's nothing in the bill about other delta analogs. Here we show the structures of each of the analogs. As you can see, they only differ in where the double bond is located in the six-membered ring. In addition, delta-10 and delta-6A-10A have a chiral center. Typically, one would need to have a chiral column to fully separate out the different chiral compounds. But for purposes of just differentiating each isomer, a method using reverse phase chromatography and common LCMS solvents was sufficient. In our method, both the R and S variations for delta-10 and delta-6A-10A elute as one peak. For the first analytical technique, we will evaluate using LC-PDA with the addition of a single quad mass spec. As with GCMS, the addition of a mass spec allows for confirmation of the isomers by providing specific mass spec information, plus the ability to use an internal standard for quantitation. The mass spec also provides the ability to run fast scans in both positive and negative polarities simultaneously, allowing for a single LC injection. For the single quad method, all standards were purchased from Cayman Chemical. In addition to the chiral isomers, a four-component mix was run, which included CBD, THCA, Delta-8, and Delta-9 THC. Chromatographic separation was achieved using an 8-minute method in a 5 microliter injection volume. Mobile phase A consisted of 5 millimolar ammonium formate with 0.1% formic acid, and mobile phase B consisted of a mix of methanol and acetonitrile 
was 0.1% formic acid. The final gradient conditions and method parameters can be seen in the tables displayed. Here we are demonstrating the separation of each isomer using LCPDA and a single quad. The top chromatogram is from the PDA at 220 nanometers. The bottom chromatogram is from the single quad. The black trace is for a sim event monitoring a mass to charge of 315 in positive mode, and the pink trace is for a sim event monitoring mass to charge 357 in negative mode. Not shown here is the sim event that monitored mass to charge 317 in positive mode used for the internal standard. If we look even closer at the chromatograms generated from the single quad, we can see distinct baseline separation between delta-8 and delta-9 THC, as well as sufficient resolution between delta-10 and 6A-10A. One of the benefits to using the mass spec is that we can perform in-source fragmentation in order to induce fragmentation of each of these isomers for secondary confirmation. One can see when comparing the spectrum for delta-8 and delta-9, they are very similar. They have multiple fragments in common, including mass to charge 247. When we perform the in-source fragmentation by applying a DC voltage to our Q-array, one can see that there is a 239 mass to charge peak that is unique to delta-8 specifically. This can assist with further differentiating each analyte as well as providing more confidence in the results. In addition to that, both delta-10 and delta-6A-10A show unique masses when in-source fragmentation is performed. In this particular example, you can see that delta-10 has a specific mass to charge of 217, whereas delta-6A-10A has a fragment seen at 299. Both are specific to these isomers only. All calibration curves were run in triplicate and had at least five points with a correlation coefficient of 0.996 or better. Internal standard quantitation was used with a 1 over C weighting for all analytes. A deuterated form of delta 9 THC was used as the internal standard and was spiked using 25 microliters at a 500 nanogram per microliter concentration for all samples. The accuracy of each calibrator was between 83.7% and 117.3%, with a percent RSD of 7.85 or better. Neat calibration curves were run from 0.01 nanograms per microliter to 10 nanograms per microliter, the exact calibration range varying for each analyte. The average accuracy for all calibrators is shown here. In addition to running this method in meat standards, we tested a matrix matched calibration curve, but found interference was seen from the presence of native cannabinoids in the matrix. Two hemp samples were extracted and analyzed against the calibration curves. Sample extraction was completed using 100 milligrams of dry flour, geogrinded for five minutes at 1000 RPM. 10 milliliters of methanol was then added, and the sample was vortexed for one minute before centrifuging. One milliliter of the supernatant was then aliquoted into a sample vial for injection. All calibrators and hemp samples were spiked with the deuterated delta-9 THC for internal standard quantitation. As you can see here, the spiked hemp sample clearly still demonstrates baseline separation of delta-8 and delta-9, as well as sufficient resolution between delta-10 and delta-6A-10A. Three equations were used to determine the total amount of THC in each of the hemp flower samples. Equation three was used to determine the percent THC for each individual isomer within the samples. Equation one is the most common calculation used based on the specifications of the Hemp Farm Act. It uses only delta-9 THC when determining the total THC content, whereas equation two takes into consideration all THC isomers when calculating the final THC content. The second analytical technique we will discuss uses an LC-PDA with the addition of a triple quad mass spec. The triple quad still has all of the added benefits a mass spec has to offer, such as the use of an internal standard or a single LC injection to run both positive and negative polarities. 
In addition to this, the triple quad offers higher selectivity and specificity because of the collision-induced fragmentation. This allows us to use smaller injection volumes while still achieving lower detection limits than what was observed with both the single quad or PDA. The smaller injection volume also helps reduce the frequency of cleaning needed and any potential matrix interference that could be seen. For the triple quad method, all standards were purchased from Cayman Chemical. In addition to the chiral isomers, a 10 component mix and 8 additional standards were run. These consisted of a variety of cannabinoids, including the more common ones, such as CBD, THCA, and CBC, as well as additional emerging cannabinoids, such as CBT, CBCO, and Delta-9 THCP. The same chromatographic method and LCMS solvents were used, the major difference to the method being the 1 microliter injection volume needed instead of the 5 microliter injection volume used on the single quad. Just like with the single quad, being sure we can individually identify and quantify each isomer as well as the other cannabinoids present in our samples is needed. The top chromatogram is from the PDA at 220 nanometers. The bottom chromatogram is from the triple quad. Multiple MRM traces can be seen for each cannabinoid. Each analyte consists of at least one quantifier transition as well as two to four qualifier transitions. As you can see, the triple quad achieved complete separation and identification for all 20 cannabinoids and THC isomers present, but the PDA did not. The three highlighted areas demonstrate where two analytes could be identified using analyte-specific MRM transitions without requiring complete baseline separation. In our first example, we can see that CBG and CBD coalute in our PDA chromatogram. They still elute at the same time for the triple quad chromatogram, but the ability to use different MRM transitions specific to each analyte means individual quantitation can still be completed. In the second example, we can see the addition of the internal standard. The triple quad mass spec again allows us to individually identify the deuterated form of delta 9 THC from the native delta 9 THC. Whereas in the PDA chromatogram, no presence of the internal standard can be seen. Our last example, again, shows two peaks eluding at the same time, and the mass spec being required to properly identify and quantify these analytes without needing baseline resolution. In addition to this, though, it shows the ability of the mass spec to identify and quantify two analytes in opposing polarities with no compromise and still utilizing the one injection. Two hemp samples were extracted and analyzed against the triple quad method. The same sample extraction used for the single quad was completed for the triple quad, starting with 100 milligrams of dry flour and ending with a one milliliter of supernatant. Due to the added sensitivity and calibration range used on the triple quad though, additional dilutions were needed for the final hemp sample injections. As you can see here, the sample still demonstrates baseline separation and sufficient resolution for all four isomers, as well as the identification of the additional cannabinoids present in the sample. Throughout this discussion, we demonstrated the development of a method that shows separation of four THC isomers. That method was then applied to both a single quad and triple quad. We completed the quantitation of each analyte using high accuracy and percent RSDs, and we accurately measured each THC isomer within a hemp sample. Currently, final quantitation of all 20 cannabinoids and the more comprehensive method is being completed. I would like to thank Rachel Lieberman and Eberhard Kunin. For more information, go to www.growyourlab.com or feel free to email me at jcdavis at shimatsu.com.